You remark further on the bill as amended. Uh, Representative Master Francesco, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am not surprised by the outcome of that vote. Um, I'm disappointed, as I always am, when I'm trying to protect the integrity of our elections. But I'm not surprised by it. We've been debating this for a long time. We've debated it last year for hours. We've tried to put provisions in place for checks and balances to secure our election process. And every single time we do it, we get shot down. It's always no, no, no. So I, I really want to know when is the state of Connecticut and this legislature going to take steps to improve the integrity of our elections and make sure that there's checks and balances in place. Uh, with that said, Mr. Speaker, I just had a, I do have a couple more questions for the proponent of the bill, if I may. Please proceed, Madam. Thank you. Now that this amendment I put through has not passed, can you tell me through you, Mr. Speaker, does the Secretary of State within available appropriations have the authority to send out an application for a ballot to every eligible voter in the state of Connecticut in the 2022 election? Through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill does not address that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The bill does not address that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Master Francesco. Thank you. And I believe you, what you mentioned is that the bill does not address that issue. Um, I think it does. We've changed. If, if, it didn't address, if it had nothing to do with the Secretary of State mailing out mass applications for ballots, would be one thing. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker, the bill did address that because I just put an amendment in to prevent that from happening. So in my opinion, the bill does address it by changing the word sickness and taking it the legislative intent, the, the legislative intent being removed from that as an individual illness, an individual sickness taken out of the equation, opens the door for the Secretary of State because everybody is eligible. Anybody can send out an application. That's the problem. So I don't have an answer on that. Will, you want my personal opinion is, is yes, I, the, the, the Secretary of State is authorized to send out mass applications for ballots within available appropriations if she had it. Uh, towns can certainly do it if they have the funding for it. And that was my biggest concern. Not that we don't want people to vote by absentee ballot. Clearly, I understand their fear their concern with COVID for the past two years, now going on three years. And there's some people that will never, that will always be concerned about it. And I clearly understand that. And they can certainly request an application for an absentee ballot. On, through you, Mr. Speaker, on page, on lines, I guess starting at 36. Actually, line 49 in the bill. There's a date in there. Does this bill only effective through November 3rd, 2021? Can you please explain lines 49 and on through you, Mr. Speaker? Representative Fox. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sh lines LCO 3540, which I believe is the current bill. Line 49 in my copy does not have a date in it. It references, it simply says official. Through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Mr. Francesco. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So in the bill that I'm looking at on line 49 to 52, it talks about the state election in 2020 and any election primary referendum held on June 23rd, 2021, but prior to November 3rd, 2021. That part does not exist through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Fox. Thank you, I apologize, I was looking at the, the wrong copy. That, that's correct, that, that is being deleted as indicated by the bracket line, beginning line 49. Uh, that, that section is being uh, deleted through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Mr. Francesco. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm trying to look on the bill. Usually there's brackets there on my copy to show where something language is taken out. I don't see it on here, so I guess I was just wondering, does this bill expire um, after the November election? Through you, Mr. Speaker? Representative Fox. Uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, no, it does not. This bill, if enacted, will become law. Through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Master President. Cool. Thank you, and I understand, Mr. Speaker, the part they took out was referring to the 2021 election. What I was getting at is that this is not only in effect for the 2022 election, this is permanent language put into our statutes. Is that correct through you, Mr. Speaker? Representative Fox. That's correct, you, Mr. Speaker, that's correct. Representative Master Francesco. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would say that, and I wanna go back to the intent of our Constitution and the language that's before us because the Constitution clearly gives the legislature the authority to make that change. We, we debated this last year when we were voting on early voting. And the question and my concern was that there were no parameters, there was no time frame. And I kept on hearing the argument that the legislature makes that decision. It's in there. It says that the legislature is in the Constitution, that the legislature can make those decisions. They have the authority. They may provide by statute to make those decisions. It's no different here. Now, I understand some people read it wrong, and they may agree with the Supreme Court's decision, but I don't agree with it at all. It clearly says in here that the legislature can provide conditions, not in those words, but they have the authority to do that. And that's exactly what they did because when that, those conditions were put on, when they talked about such elector, and I know I've mentioned this before, but I, I think it's worth repeating so people understand exactly what this bill does. It broadens the scope for your eligibility for an absentee ballot, which is wrong. So there's legislative intent, but what other intent is there? What is the purpose of this? Is there an opportunity because of COVID? If this clearly was a problem and, and if this clearly was the language in our statutes were unconstitutional, you mean to tell me it's taken 80 years to figure it out? No, it's an opportunity because of COVID. It's an opportunity to do backdoor, no excuse absentee voting before this, the voters in this state have a chance to make that a, a to make that decision on the ballot. So I assume that going forward, there will be a lot of absentee ballots. And the window for tampering with ballots will continue because the legislature does not want to pass any measures in place. When I look at all the other states that have checks and balances in place, at least they verify the signature when you're sending in the ballot. Some states even require you to send a photocopy of your driver's license or some type of an ID. But there's, very, there's only a handful of states that don't require a signature to verify. And this has always been the debate here there should be some verification on those applications and on those ballots. There must be. We, this, you know, this issue should not be a partisan issue. It should be bipartisan. We all should want the same thing. And we should work really hard to get there because our elections are important. Our elections are what hold us as elected officials accountable and they are important. They are important for the democracy, for the state, and for our country. And we must work very hard to preserve it. I can't understand how, for the many years we've been dealing with absentee balances, we had no checks and balances in place. I can't understand how that happened. There should be some, Mr. Speaker. There should be a process, a start, somewhere, to do something. But every time we propose something, we're getting rejected. So I, I would like to have that opportunity to give my colleagues another chance to listen. Let's start the process. 
let's try to fix this, fix this. Let's restore the confidence in the voters in the state of Connecticut. It's not, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. It's like anything else. Things do happen. Fraud does happen. That's why people, you know, that's why people lock their doors at home because they don't want strangers coming in. Same thing with our elections. We, don't want, we want legitimate eligible voters to vote and we want to make sure that we verify them. So with that, Mr. Speaker, the uh, clerk is in possession of an amendment. It's LCO 3556. I would ask the clerk to call the amendment and I'd be given leave of the chamber to summarize. And when the vote is taken, Mr. Speaker, I ask that it's taken by roll. Will the clerk please call LCO number 3556, which will be designated House Amendment Schedule C. House Amendment Schedule C, offered by Representative Mastro Francesco. Representative Mastro Francesco, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, again, this is a real simple amendment. It again begins the process and gives my colleagues another chance to take a look at this and to say that, yes, you're serious about fixing our elections here to make sure that there are checks and balances in place, that my colleagues on the other side are serious about trying to restore the confidence in the residents and the voters of the state of Connecticut, that, yes, we do do a good job. We take pride in our elections. It's very simple. As I mentioned, over 200,000 applications came back to the Secretary of State in the 2020 election, over 1.2 million ballots were sent out. And about 50,000 of them never came back. So there was about 50,000 voters that we know of that were disenfranchised. There was no um, inquiry into it, no investigation into why that happened. But I think every voter who doesn't get a chance to vote is a sin, and we need to make sure that everyone has the opportunity. But we must make sure that they are legitimate and that they are eligible to vote and they are who they are. The honor system today, that's basically what we're working on. So this amendment, Mr. Speaker, is very simple. All it says is that such elector or person's signature on the materials used to vote by absentee ballot must be verified. That's it. The state of Connecticut should have some system in place to verify it. Now, I know the argument on the other side will be, and I've heard this plenty of times, that your signatures change over time. Well, yeah, they do. But when you have your signature changed, but I'm going to say to your photo, your driver's license, for example, every five years or every four years, you get a new driver's license, right? We don't use the same photo that we did 20 years ago. So, yes, your signatures do change, but you can certainly re-verify them every so many years. So, Mr. Speaker, I ask my colleagues to please support this measure. It's a step in the right direction to get us all working together. And let's stop with this one-sided issue that Democrats want one thing, Republicans want another thing. We need to work together to preserve the integrity of our elections and have processes in place that are gonna verify who the voters are. I move adoption, Mr. Speaker. The question before this chamber is on adoption of House Amendment Schedule C. Will you remark, Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the representative for the amendment. A few questions through you to the proponent of the amendment, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, through you to the proponent, this is essentially a signature verification amendment. Is that true, through you, Mr. Speaker? Representative Mr. Francesco. That is correct through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and is the representative able to explain to me how the process will play out in the sense that um, who will verify, how will it be verified through you, Mr. Speaker? Representative Master Francesco. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is not outlined in this particular bill, Mr. Speaker. It's a step in the right direction that we should have some sort of a process in place. Um, this would be a first step, certainly something that we can work on what that process will be but to let voters know that we will be checking signatures through you. Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, will, the, does the proponent, will this be verified by the municipality or by the state? Through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Master Francesco. Again, Mr. Speaker, that does not, is not outlined in this bill at this time. Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the proponent for the, for the responses. And just um, one final uh, question. You alluded to the fact that signatures change over time. 
I guess the question I would have is how do you address that? Um, for an individual who lost his ability to write several years ago, and <clears throat> I'm still to this day, I'm unable to properly sign my name. This would disenfranchise me from voting. Three minutes, speaker. How would that be addressed? Three minutes, speaker. Representative Massa Francesco. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are always exceptions that we should make for people. We should always address that. And there are times when people cannot do that. And we should be very sensitive to that. I think Mr. Fox is going to make me cry over here. <laughs> Um, because I am very sensitive to it, and I do, and I do appreciate his comments. But we should make accommodations for that, always. Through you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I apologize for taking the temperature down the room, and I apologize for making the representative get on the verge of tears. I, so I do apologize. Um, through you, Mr. Speaker, for those reasons and several others, I ask my colleague to oppose the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Francesco. Thank you. I'm, can you repeat that through you? I'm sorry. Did he, was he asking me a question? I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. No. Representative Fox, was that a question? Uh, there was no question. Three, Mr. Speaker, no. 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 Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. I move adoption. Thank you. Thank you.